Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Veg Networking Canada. We are a community where plant-based vegan companies connect and collaborate. It is important to honor, acknowledge, and respect that many of us are located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of many Indigenous peoples of Canada. Today, we have a special guest with us who is a previous ecotoxicologist who worked for Health Canada for nearly 20 years, a champion for developing a Zen mindset to cut through the noise and find a way to be more at one with the environment while standing up for what is right, now on a mission to prove that eating plant-based can be both simple and satisfying. Veg Networking Canada is pleased to introduce the founder of Fomagerie Zen Gary. Welcome, Linda Turner. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Well, we're excited to have you here and thank you for joining us and, and everybody who's going to be listening to this on their own time. Can you tell us uh, the story of what led you to go vegan? Yes, it was quite a long time ago. I was vegetarian for most of my adult life. I just felt like that was the right choice for me. And then I started reading, I read the China study, I read a lot of work by Colin Campbell and uh, Dr. McDougall and, and, and Dr. Greger, all of those very inspiring physicians and scientists that were at that time in 2010 when I transitioned to a plant-based diet, really coming forward and promoting the benefits of uh, plant-based, whole foods, plant-based diets. So I read all of that. I just devoured all of the information I could find. I think it started my journey with Chris Carr and how she was using diet and juicing to control her, her cancer. Uh, and, and I was just so intrigued and inspired by all of their work. I, I, I couldn't unhear that. I couldn't unlearn that. So it, it just became the next best decision for me. So uh, I transitioned to a plant-based diet in 2010 and I had to really learn how to cook all over again. I don't know if you guys experienced that as well during your transitions, but uh, I was a single mother of two at the time, and um, I didn't have a whole lot of time, but in 2010, there were not a lot of convenient plant-based options on the market, so I really had to dig in and, and embrace this whole vegan cooking thing, so that's pretty much what I did. Interesting. So at that time, is that what sparked your entrepreneurial start and your, your origin story when it comes to entrepreneurship or did something precede that? Uh, when I started for my reason, Gary, I also had another business. So I guess it would have started before that. I owned a yoga studio with uh, a partner of mine um, here in Glengarry. So this is where the name Zengary kind of comes from, the, my yoga roots and my hometown, my town where I founded my business here in Glengarry. Um, so I guess I kind of had an entrepreneurial bug inside of me. My mom was actually an entrepreneur. She had small businesses growing up. And so I kind of witnessed that um, and it, it wasn't really an intentional choice. I have to say it was something that evolved kind of organically with my discovery that plant-based eating could be so delicious, but there weren't very many products on the market that were catering to that kind of diet anymore. And I, I really see plant-based diet as something that is necessary for the future from an ecotoxicologist perspective. Uh, it, it's just, it just makes sense for the environment. You know, we're eating closer to the earth. 
um, you know, there's that whole pyramid where, you know, plants are on the bottom and, and, and as you go up, uh, the pyramid in, in your diet, you're, you just, you're concentrating all of these toxins and, and anyways, there's so many reasons that plant-based eating makes sense, but the climate crisis is my number one motivation. I have to say health and, and the climate crisis, not that I don't love animals because I have them all over my house. You might see them walking around everywhere. And I'm so excited to spend time with animals, but those were my initial motivations. Fascinating. Go ahead. And I just really feel, I felt at the time that if, plant-based foods, delicious plant-based foods were more readily available, more people would, would buy them and enjoy them and, and reduce their impact on the environment and the health, the, the stress on the healthcare system and all of these things that diet plays a role in. So I, I guess I just wanted to make a little bit of a difference in that whole world of of making plant-based eating more readily accessible for people. Well, that's the courageous spirit of the entrepreneur, right? It's if not me, then who kind of thing. And so you're filling that gap in, in what you saw out there. And okay, so where is Fomagerie Zangari going in the future? Where are we going in the future? Well, um, I guess... It's a little bit of a mystery. We have obviously a business plan that we lay out, but the last few years has really taught me that we can't really predict that where we're going to end up in two years, five years, 10 years, the whole uh, economic climate, the whole uh, COVID um, thing that we've had to go through, shutting down businesses has been really challenging for so many people and so many businesses, um, but we are really uh, embracing getting back into trade shows and samplings because I just love connecting with people on a one-to-one -one basis, hearing their feedback, learning about their journeys and it, it's so inspiring for me to feel like my products have touched people's lives and people come to me and they say, you know, I discovered your products when I first went vegan and, and it was a lifesaver. So I keep doing what I'm doing because of those people really. And as challenging as it has been in the last few years, those those people really keep me going, keep me on this journey. And I really believe that cheese is the last thing people want to give up. You know, there's a great alternative for plant-based milks. You don't really miss that. You can find great plant-based baking and, and, you know, but cheese is something that people are really connected to on a very deep level. And it's so ingrained in our in our society with entertaining the wine and cheese, you know, the cheese fondues, all of these things are part of our celebrations, part of our entertaining. And people are, they don't want to give that up, that feeling, that that connection. So that's why we really, really need delicious plant-based cheeses that you could bring to your wine and cheese and no one's going to roll their eyes and say, oh God, not the vegan cheese, you know, that's, th that's the problem that we really need to solve. That's what we're, we're trying to address, you know, and we can do that with all natural ingredients. It doesn't have to be weird um, things that, that, the cheese is made from. We can take cashew milk and, and use that same fermentation process and turn it into something really delightful and delicious. So speaking of delightful and delicious, you know, people listening to this who may not have cross paths with your brand and your products yet, can you just give us a little bit of a rundown of maybe from a skew 
flavor perspective, what's available and or distribution as well. So people can be a little bit more in tune with, with your brand. Yes, definitely. And um, the first thing that I want to say is that we kind of have two different lines and people may not be aware of that. We have uh, spreads and the spreads are made. I have some packages here so people can see what they actually look like. They're all made with fresh herbs. And Megan, I know you're going to appreciate the fact that we grow our herbs in our in our facility. So we have Zip Grow Towers. Zip Grow is a local company in Cornwall, and they sell these hydroponic vertical grow towers that we have installed in our facility. And um, the two two of our flagship flavors, the garlic and fine herb and sun-dried tomato and basil, we use these herbs that we grow in our facility. So the sun-dried tomato and basil flavor is one of my absolute favorites. And I really wanted to use fresh basil, but if you are used to working with herbs, you know that it lasts about three and a half minutes when you put it in the fridge, right? You buy your fresh basil and then your fridge is too cold. You take it out and it's all limp and turning black around the edges. And so we were throwing out a lot of herbs. And then I started working with uh, Smart Grains, which was a company in Cornwall that was growing basil in these zip grow towers inside of an old shipping crate. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. You could just pop these shipping crates anywhere and you could grow whatever you wanted to grow. So they stopped doing that. And then I was like, well, to heck with it. I'm just going to get my own towers and I'm going to grow my basil myself. And then I'll be able to pick it and have it just as fresh as I did when I was going there to get it. So that was something that we started and something that we're doing that's a little bit different and you can really smell the herbs when you walk into our, our vegan cheese shop in Alexandria and everyone comments on it. And, and it's really funny because I could, I can't smell it anymore. <laughs> I think I'm just immune to it now, but um, so the spreads that we have are all made with the fresh herbs. Two new flavors that we've recently launched are the zesty dill made with fresh dill, obviously, and the blueberry and rosemary which is a great fun combination. And Priya, I think you should try it with a Prosecco. I think it's going to make a great little pairing. Um, and then we have wheels and the wheels are a little richer, a little firmer. And these are fun for cheese boards. You can slice them, you can freeze them and grate them. Um, great for, for holidays and our bake, our brie can be baked in a baked brie or brie en croute. There's the, so many fun ways to use them. And so, yeah, I think the wheels are a little more elevated and the spreads are a little more like for every day, put them on your bagel in your sandwich, just on a cracker or some dip, some, uh, vegetables in there so many different ways to enjoy them. And are both both lines available uh, directly to consumers through your website or is it, you know, at certain retailers in certain parts of the country or how does that look? We are at retailers pretty much across the country. There's kind of a dead space in the prairies a little bit that we're working on. Um, but in Vancouver and in Ontario, they have a great selection of them at Whole Foods Market. We are um, really working hard in mainstream grocery right now. And that is one of our big goals for 2024. Um, so you'll see us doing a lot of demos at Foodlands and Sobeys and Metros in Quebec and um, We'll be at so many events, but we also do have an online store so you can order them directly from us. Right now, we're only shipping in Quebec and Ontario just because the cost of shipping overnight is a little exorbitant to go out to uh, Vancouver and, you know, the places where you guys are. <laughs> 
All right. So um, next, that's so, so great. So great. And part of the downside when we have great conversations with people like you, at least for me, just speaking personally for myself, not for the group or anybody else, but we do this for where I am out in BC in and around lunchtime and you hold up these and I just drool and, <laughs> but it sounds great. Especially that blues, blueberry, rosemary sounds nice. Um, so there's no right or wrong answers to this question. Um, you can answer it from yourself personally, from the business. Maybe it's something that you've done in the past, you're currently doing or planning to do in the future. But the question is centered around giving back and charity. So like, what does that mean or what have you done type of thing? We have, um, we're, we work a lot with local charities. So we've done fundraisers for schools. We've done a lot of fundraisers for animal sanctuaries. We used to host um, an annual event every year, a Christmas party that we would use as a fundraiser for, and we would select a different animal sanctuary every year to support. During COVID, that had to stop, and we haven't really started it up again. Um, but I love supporting, you know, people who are doing great things in the world. Uh, I think that as um, private brands, we really need to, to do that and and to work with and uh, those people who are trying to make a difference in the world. So we've worked with um, local animal sanctuary like our our refuge and and uh, and then other ones that are further away in in Toronto and uh those kinds of things so so those are some of the things but we also support our francophone cultural center we do a little discounts for their clients and we uh, have events that we can host at our place for them so yeah, we, we do a lot of work with the community and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. And it goes without saying, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but yourself and a lot of the other individuals and brands that we have conversations with, uh, just by nature of who were, who's in our ecosystem at Vision Network in Canada, you and others are already giving back in a in in a very uh important way by you know being animal free being plant-based and all of that so that kind of goes without saying but thanks for did you say rr refuge yep they are a local refuge here in alexandria they're doing some great things we've worked with animal justice before too sponsoring their ottawa event and and you know there's great people doing great things everywhere you look yeah, absolutely. And there's probably been no shortage over that. Because how long has your brand been in existence again? Since, tw is it 2013? 2013. So we celebrated 10 years this summer. Yeah. And so there's probably been no shortage of of also giving back through, uh, you know, product for fundraisers and, and silent auctions and things like this, right? Right. Well, a lot of the universities, they have wine and cheese events. And I always think it's really important for people to be able to try vegan cheeses that taste good so that they have this, this perspective that, you know, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I can actually do this. So especially at such a pivotal time in their life when they're already in that environment of learning and making changes and things like this. And you said it more than once. Um, which is really, really important is about the, the product has to be delicious because you've probably, you know, had conversations. I'm guessing by the way that you've, you've emphasized that a couple of times about how detrimental it can be to the overall movement. If say a product isn't that good, but is kind of rushed to the market or something and people try it and then think, oh, well, they're all like that. Right. I really think there is a barrier that has been built up by people who have tried plant-based cheeses that, because vegan cheese has such a bad reputation. It's like, oh, you're sampling vegan cheese? No. And people will walk away and they don't even want to try it because they've had a bad experience in the past. So we're really working to, to, fight against that that belief that people have that it just can't be good and that's why the sampling and the in-person events not only for you enjoying it and having that connection but also to 
that must be very fulfilling to see the the eyes brighten or what have you and in, in, in real time. That's interesting. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Now, uh, okay, so you had mentioned the China study. Um, excellent book. Uh, you've mentioned a few individuals that I'll, I'll touch on in a second because this next question is not necessarily one of inspiration. That's that's the question that I'll ask you after this one. Uh, this question is, what are some books, podcasts, or apps, or other resources that you would recommend for other business owners or entrepreneurs? Whether it's related to mindset, planning, veganism, you know, whatever it might be, but some resources that you would recommend to business owners, entrepreneurs. Um, one resource that I use all the time is Audible because I can listen to books in the car and we do a lot of driving to events and all this uh, events, demos, all these things. So to be able to use that time effectively to listen to audiobooks and to be inspired, um, I find that really useful. Uh, one book that I just finished reading that I'll mention because um, it's the one that pops right into my mind is uh, Mike Fada's book called Grow. Uh, I read, I listened to that on Audible recently. Um, James Clear has a really great newsletter called 321 that I really enjoy. Uh, so I, I recommend us. Uh, subscribing to his newsletter and then I just have some people that I follow on Instagram probably Chris Carr was one of my earliest influencers so I've continued to follow what she's doing to promote plant-based eating in uh, her space um yeah but there's there's so many people that are that are doing great things uh, Profit First was another book that I read that I really uh, enjoyed. Awesome. Awesome. So kind of naturally kind of going into the, the next question. So you mentioned Chris Carr at the beginning. You mentioned uh, Michael Greger, T. Colin Campbell. I don't know if it was Clapper or I forget what other uh, physician or doctor you mentioned, but um, you mentioned them as sources of inspiration for you. So We've had guests talk about other sources of inspiration, whether it's organizations or individuals, and then other guests have kind of gone a different route. They've honestly, we've also had guests talk about them themselves um, being their own source of inspiration, which I think is great when it comes from a, a certain way. But um, all that to say as well, people have told us what inspiration means to them more on a philosophical level. So we're just trying to figure out what does inspiration mean to Linda and your brand? Well, I think that the first people who inspired me to change my diet were definitely in the science realm. They were physicians, they were doing research. And uh, as an ecotoxicologist, biologist, I, I was, I'm swayed by the numbers and the data, the data speaks for itself. So, and one thing that I really love about they have to really fight to get that information out there you know like this information has been around for a long time and I, I it it's kind of mind-boggling why it's it's not more prevalent and and well known and cited in our everyday lives you know <laughs> Um, people maybe just don't want to see these kinds of things. They they kind of turn the other way because they don't want to change. And they fear that maybe if they find out more about the science and the reasons that they will have to change. And it was something that I had to change after seeing these kinds of things because I feel like it's kind of an awakening and and once you see all of that right in front of you, it's really hard to ignore it. So it sounds like, I guess, reading between the lines a little bit, it sounds like what inspires you is not only uh, organizations and individuals who are putting out facts and data and information, but also what inspires you is the people who, as tough as it might be, 
take that on board and act and, and change accordingly, putting words in your mouth a little bit, but that's what it sounds like. Definitely. Those people who go out on a limb and are trying to change the world because it's the right thing to do and they just can't not do it. I think that inspires me. You know, there's people who are going against the grain, you know, walking the path less traveled, you know, these, these people who, who see the truth and are brave enough to stand up for what they believe in and, and put it out there. Amazing. So we had a question come in from somebody live with us right now um, before we get to our last sort of scheduled question. And this one is, will Fomagerie Zangari be at the Planted Expo in Toronto this year? Yes. Yes. We are going to be there and we're super excited. We were there last year and we wouldn't miss it this year. So yes. Emphatically. Amazing. All right. So last question for you, Linda, is... Um, do you have any advice, lessons, or tips for business owners or entrepreneurs? Um, I, I, I'm not one to feel like I, I, I should be giving advice to people. Um, I'm definitely not, um, a business owner from, a. a academic perspective my my background is is very far from business and i think there's a very steep learning curve for business owners and you need to have enough passion and resilience to hold on to your dream and not give up when things get tough because they always get tough and there's always challenges and sometimes it feels like you're just solving problems one after the other, but, but you just have to take one step at a time and hold on to that dream and what inspired you to start doing what you're doing. Beautiful. So is there anything maybe in this conversation today, Linda, that we missed that you want to go back to and or any announcements or anything that you want to mention before we let everybody know where they can find you online and on Instagram? Well, actually, this is a great platform for me to do a little educational piece here because we are launching new packaging for our wheels and it's going to be hitting shelves very soon. And one of the things we did is think a lot about the names of our products. And I don't know if, if if you've been following my journey from the beginning, you may have heard that the um, the government came after us for using the C word on our packaging. We couldn't say cheese and there was a big debate about it. And it's an ongoing debate. It's, it's going on in the U S it's going on here in Canada uh, but apparently cheese is a, is a word that um, is owned by dairy companies. So we avoided these words for a, a long time, um, but now we're just going to go out and embrace it. So our smoky jalapeno cashew cheese is now going to be called a smoked cheddar. So don't be afraid if, if you love the smoky jalapeno and a lot of you do, it's not going away. The, the recipe hasn't changed, but we did, we are, we're changing the name to smoked cheddar. And then our pub cheddar, which was an ale aged um, flavor. People just were confused by that whole thing. So we're just going for it and we're calling it a pub cheddar. It's cultured with Bo's beer, which is a local all natural brewery down the street from us in Van Cleek Hill. And it makes a really amazing mac and cheese. So if you can get your hands on our, our ale age pub cheddar, I recommend doing that. And then my personal favorite, I'm changing the name of that one too. It's called an aged cumin cheese and we're going for cumin gouda. So those three cheeses, the names are going to change. The recipes are going to stay the same. Um, so I think 
you know, this is a great way for me to get that message out. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And thank you for making me drool again, talking about the pub cheddar mac and cheese. Um, all right, great. So um, everybody, you can find out more online, zengary.com, Z or Z, E-N-G-A-R-R-Y.com. And on Instagram, you can go there and check it out and drool and, and go to the website and order and find out all the places that it's stocked. That one there on Instagram is at zengaryveg. So this has been another amazing conversation with another great entrepreneur here at Veg Networking Canada. We were talking to the founder of Fomagerie Zangari, Linda Turner. Thank you so much for joining us, Linda. Everybody listening, thank you so much for joining us as well. And we'll catch you soon on another episode. Take care. Bye for now.